All right, shifting gears, I want to talk about the Chicago Bulls and why it's time for them to blow it up. Bulls right now are currently five and nine. They're three and seven in their last 10. They won the other night against the Magic. I'm, no, I'm sorry. They definitely lost against the Magic. They won against the Heat. They lost back to back games against the Magic. They did beat the Pistons, but they lost against the Bucks, lost against the Suns. They beat the Jazz, lost against the Nuggets, lost against the Nets, lost against the Mavericks. Somehow they beat the Pacers, but then once again, lost to the Pistons, lost to the Thunder. Like the losses that they're taking against teams like the Pistons, against teams like the Magic back to back, those are just really, really bad losses because you're going to lose the games against the Bucks. You're going to lose the games against the Nuggets. The Nets game was a competitive one, like as it should have been. And the Raptors win. Was a competitive should have, but I don't think the future of this Bulls team is bright. And recent reports came out that the Bulls are exploring what trades should be like. Like I said, I can't remember if the Zach Levine officially came out and said he's requested a trade, but reports are definitely out that the Bulls are at the very least answering the phone. At the very least, I believe they're answering the phone. So I wanted to take a look. The Athletic put out an interesting article talking about some potential trades. I don't love all of these trades. I'm gonna keep it a bean. But I wanted to check it out and let's have a conversation. The first one they will talk about, and this is the one I'm probably the most against, is the Philadelphia 76. I don't want Zach. If you, for, for some context, let me just tell you what type of player Zach Levine is so you know what we're talking about because I think controversial I think Zach Levine I don't want to say the word the word isn't overrated the word is just I don't know how much Zach Levine moves the needle for a lot of teams depending on what they're looking unless they're looking for a very specific thing Zach Levine this season 21 game 34% from three 42% from the field uh, that's basically it Three assists, a steal. Like, he's not necessarily a great playmaker. We know he's not there necessarily for his defense. Zach Levine is what I think of when I think of a prototypical shooting guard that's there to get bucked. Gonna knock down the ball at a high clip. 34% is super low for him. Uh, last year, 34. I mean, excuse me. Last year was 37. Year before that, 38. Year before that, 41. Year before that, 38. On seven, eight attempts. Like, he's a great shooter. So 34% feels a little low. I think part of that could just be, hey, the team ain't great. So defense is his own. I'm not saying Zach is bad. I want to make that clear. I'm not saying Zach is bad. I just don't know how much he moves the needle for all of So the Sixers trade would look like Marcus Morris, Nicholas Batum, Robert Covington, Jaden Springer, two first round picks. The reason I don't want the Sixers to do this trade is because this trade kind of locks you in. Like, this trade locks us in as our team now is Zach Levine, Tyrese Maxey and, and, and Joel B. Like, that's our core. I don't know if I love that, especially considering uh, how well Tyrese Maxey has been balling. Um, honestly, how well Kelly Oubre was balling before he got his injured. Still praying for a speedy recovery for him. Uh, hit, being hit by a car as a pedestrian is insane. So prayers out to him and his family and a speedy recovery for sure. But he was hooping. Like, legitimately, he was hooping. At one point, we had four guys average at 20. Like, for the first eight games of the season, I think I said this earlier, Kelly was uh, at 20 a game on some really solid shooting. My honest and true question is, how much more is... Like if Kelly, like Kelly's at like 18 or 16 right now, he had a stinker where he had like eight and he had another stinker where he had like nine. So it brought his averages down a little. But before those last couple of games, how much more was Zach Levine going to do that than Kelly? In terms of just a guy on the court that's going to get you a bucket, I don't love that trade. Moving on. The Los Angeles Lakers. This is one I think that makes more sense only specifically because the Lakers need this type of player. The Sixers don't need a guy that's going to go out and get you a bucket per se in, in my mind. Uh, the trade here is D'Angelo Russell, Rui, Rui Hachimura, Rui Hachimura, Torian Prince, um, and Jalen Hood, Shafino. And the take the first round pick. Now, not as many picks as the, the Phillies offers could look like, but I'm really hoping Philly don't make that offer. I like this trade a lot for the Lakers because they need some scoring. They need somebody who's going to do something. LeBron James not on the court. They need somebody who can go get their own bucket. We know Zach Levine can do that. He's a guy who can go get a bucket. This moves the needle a lot more for the, the Los Angeles Lakers. The only problem is this trade can't happen until January 15th because Hachimura um, isn't available to be moved until January 14th. If you move uh, Hachimura with Gabe Vincent, like if take Rory Hachimura out the trade and put in Gabe Vincent, it can happen in December. It just really just depends on. I like that trade for the Bulls and the Lakers, mainly for the Lakers. I like that trade. Golden State Warriors, Zach Levine, for Chris Paul, Jonathan Kaminga, and a first round pick. If I'm the Bulls, I am not. You get a project and Jonathan Kaminga. Uh, I want to say Chris Paul is still under contract, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Paul Deere structured the team can have him for 30 mil for the next year or waive him with no financial commitment the year after that. So 30 mil next year, or you can waive them. Bulls, I guess the thought process is Zach's still under contract for a couple more years. Uh, he's making 40 mil, 45, 40 to 45 mil a year for the next two years, maybe three. He has a player option in 2027. So you're just getting off the money faster. See that for the Bulls. So far, my ideal locations for Zach Levine in the trade in terms of how much he can help that team, not necessarily how great that trade is for the Bulls. And I think... A lot of times when we talk about trade, we get so excited in how a player can impact the team he's going to go to that we forget that. Team traded him away, gotta want the trade. 
I like the Heat trade for the Bulls. Um, it's Zach Levine for Kyle Lowry. Uh, they're send their um, rookie, JJJ, Jamie Yasquez Jr., Nikola Jovic, Orlando Robinson. Uh, Kyle Lowry is coming off last year of his deal, so he'd be a free agent at the end of this year, get that money off the book. Uh, JJJ has been fantastic for the Heat, so you got a nice young player to continue to build. Look forward to the future. Get a first-round pick. I like that for the Bulls. I like it for the Heat because, once again, what do we always say? What have I been saying for the last three off-seasons that the Heat need offense? Now, what does that line up? Do you bring Tyler Hero back off the bench now? Do you run some interesting lineup of Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, and exactly being on the court at the same time that's something i'll leave the air exposure to figure out i like the idea of tyler hero potentially coming back to his bench role but also in the same breath tyler hero and zach levine why it is kept ain't, like i'll say zach's better than tyler hero my question is how much it ain't that much like it ain't that much to me at least it ain't the new york knicks trade uh they had a trade for the knicks here i like the idea of it um but personally i don't think the knicks are going to trade for zach levine i think the knicks are at least holding out to see how the rest of the league shapes out tim rules maybe decide to move car anthony town tim rules look fantastic right now but hey february is still a month months away um evan fournier dante divincenio emmanuel quickly in a first round pick this trade can't be happening to the 15th due to the restrictions of divincenzo i honestly this is because this would be if the bulls believe in emmanuel quickly, which i think he's been really really good i think quickly has been solid this season he's a restricted free, he's a Restricted free agent this offseason, uh, so their Bulls would have to, you know, give him a bag and pay him if they want to keep him. But I like the idea of ten if they believe in Emmanuel quickly, I like the idea because I like it. I've liked what I've seen from quickly so far, but it really just depends if the Bulls believe it. As to the trades, I ain't going to hold you. I don't love, so we're not going to go too deep into them. The only other trade I thought that was really interesting from the bull side of things, I don't know if the Raptors would do it, but it was the Toronto Raptors. Gray Trent Jr., Thaddeus Young, Otto Porter Jr., two first-round picks. Uh, mainly because of a lot of the expiring salary, and you get two first-round picks. It's great for the Bulls. I don't know if Toronto would like to do that. That's mainly if Toronto, in my mind, is believing in the Scotty Barnes future and really decided to just move forward with that. I think you make that trade. Keep Scotty Barnes. Keep Zach. I wouldn't be surprised if we luck up and... Um, Pascal's on a different overall all in all I think it is time though for the and to 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 move in a different direction to go in a different direction they've been a team that has the players who making a decent amount of money and just haven't really been that good and they have the type of players that I think a lot of teams would give a couple of picks like you can get probably two picks for Zach Levine you can get a pick for a pick or two depending on the team for Alice Caruso you might think that sounds crazy but that's just how good of a defender and role player he is I don't know how much you're going to get for DeMar DeRozan not necessarily saying DeMar DeRozan is bad just with the combination of age and the type of player he is you have to be a very specific team to be able to fit DeMar DeRozan in your team simply because he refuses to shoot a three-pointer uh Vucevic you might be stuck with for a little bit unless the team gets desperate and really needs a center I'm looking at you Memphis although Bismack Biombo has been solid for them or someone like, I mean, honest, yeah, mainly Memphis. Um, or <laughs> I, I just think it's time. Honestly, I just think it's time for the Bulls to move on. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing whatever the heck they decide.